Welcome to La Vida Rosa, I'm your host Pinky and today we're going to be talking about Merit at First Sight. So if you'd like to see more than just stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into this video. Y'all, I cannot believe at the bottom of the screen, it said 16 more days. How many more episodes do we have? We needed Decision Day five episodes ago. Like, what is going on here, Merit at First Sight? Why are y'all stretching this out? Y'all know these people don't like each other. Y'all know these people can't stand each other. Y'all, we know what they're going to say on decision day. Like, there's no mystery. There's no will they, won't they. We all know what these people are going to do at this point. There's nothing. There's not going to be a turning point. There's not enough therapy y'all can give these people. The experts should have been in there. We should have been saw Dr. Pepper. We should have been had Dr. Cal. We should have been had Dr. Pia. We should have been had, uh, what's making good husband name? Why is he just now coming in next episode? Why do y'all not bring them in sooner? Because y'all wait for these problems to get really bad. Y'all wait for people to get bitter. Y'all wait until it's the point of no return. And then you want to throw in an expert a ex sometimes I feel bad for the experts because I'm like they don't, they don't have nothing to work with of course they're gonna look like they have no skills or like they're not worthy of their degrees or whatever education they have because y'all give them nothing to work with y'all give them people who don't even like each other I feel like I just immediately went into a rant just now but I mean every word that I'm saying y'all need to do better this show Loki has jumped the shark. People are only watching reviews. People like me, they get on YouTube and talk about the show. And guess what? Even the people like me that are getting paid to talk about this show are getting so fed up. Okay. The show is moving so slow. I can barely keep my eyes open. I can barely pay attention. I have to rewind so many times because I'm not paying attention. I get in my phone like it, it. I used to love this show. I think that's why I'm so passionate right now. I used to love this show. I've been watching this show since season one. Y'all used to have people that were genuine. Y'all used to vet people a little bit better than y'all do now. OK, and y'all used to actually try to match people so that they will stay married. The odds are pretty bad for this show. I'm going to be honest. Okay. Especially with these past few seasons. But y'all do have some couples that are still married to this day. Have children and everything. Thriving. Why are y'all not trying to produce more of those couples? Don't y'all realize that we want to see a Deanna and Greg. We want to see. Uh, what's her name? Christine and Keith. We want to see Woody and Amani. And I don't mean to just name the black people. I mean, I'm sure there are white couples still together. We want to see that. OK, we want to see these people stick around and be able to stay married and, and be matched well so that they can have longevity in their marriages. But y'all are choosing clout chasers. Y'all are choosing people who are not ready to be married that are like, how come y'all can see these people are ready to get married? And upon first glance, we can always tell. The only person I was truly wrong about was Woody. They're shallow. They're, they're telling you how shallow they are. Oh, well, if I see a bald head man, that's not my type and I'm going to be turned off. Why are y'all choosing women that think like that? Why are y'all choosing shallow men that it's already hard for men to move past looks? Why are you choosing people that are shallow in that way? My mind. Psh, it's exhausting. The show is exhausting. It's no longer fun. It's no longer interesting. It's no longer compelling. It's no longer something that I can't wait until Wednesday night so I can watch this show and come to y'all and talk to y'all about it. And y'all feel it too because y'all be in the comments. I haven't even watched the episode of this season. You, I, Y'all put your testimonials down below and tell me who is actually watching this season. And who is just on YouTube to watch the review? Because it's so, I get this all the time. I get it in my DMs. I get it everywhere. People be thanking me for reviewing the show because they want to know what's going on, but they don't want to actually watch the show because it's boring. Reduce the time down to an hour. Why are you doing an hour and a half 
it used to be two hours. Thanks. Thank you for cutting it down to an hour and a half, but it used to be two hours of nothing. And then maybe five, 10, 15 minutes of something that is interesting. We are tired. Y'all barely give it any chance to breathe. That's another thing y'all need to chill out on. Pumping out season after season after season. And now Love is Blind is starting to do the same thing. I know it's the same production company. Love is Blind, y'all going the same route. Okay? Y'all need to learn from Merit at First Sight. And Merit at First Sight, you need to learn from your mistakes. Ooh, that was a long rant. I didn't mean to rant for that long, y'all. But it just... Y'all don't know how long it took for me to sit down and actually do this review. Like, I was about to review Love is Blind, but I knew if I review Love is Blind, I was never going to come back to Merit at First Sight. And I, I wanted to get that up for y'all. I'm going to start with Chris and Nicole. So when we first see Chris and Nicole, they're installing a bidet. We did not need to see Nicole and Chris sit down on this toilet and get water sprayed up their butts we did not need to see that no we didn't physically see it but we didn't need to whoo, see their reaction to a, an aggressive water shot up somebody's butt that was way too much see this is what y'all are doing to fill up the episodes we don't need that i couldn't believe what i was watching i had to fast forward that was so uncomfortable what was that we see dr pia counsel with them and Dr. Pia is a counselor of intimacy. I don't I don't say the word, you guys, because I don't want to get demonetized, but y'all know what I'm talking about when a man and a woman get intimate, right? Nicole thought this was going to be like a cakewalk for her. Like, oh, I already know how to please him. I'm good. You know, I don't need no tips on this or whatever. But it turns out Dr. Pia actually got to the root of her intimacy issues. She has experienced a lot of toxic relationships and she deals with low self-esteem and also we don't focus on chris as much but chris has a history of allowing his partners to treat him bad as well so that would lead me to believe at least in the past he's dealt with having low self-esteem and low confidence dr pia asked has intimacy negatively impacted you in the past and he said he's had relationships where really that's all they wanted from him they were kind of using him for that physical intimacy Nicole said basically, you know, she had the same thing happen to her, but she used it to feel wanted and she would always feel like crap afterward. She says now that she's with Chris, because he returns those feelings for her, um, she has no shame or guilt behind it. So then they do start talking about their physical intimacy and she says she would like more foreplay. Dr. Pia asked her, do you consider yourself a people pleaser? I screamed so loud. Yes. I'm so glad Dr. Pia is getting down to the root of this. And she's like, okay, you want more foreplay, but you haven't said anything about it. Are you not rocking the boat because you don't want to ruin your relationship? Are you walking around on eggshells? Basically, that's what she's doing. Dr. Pia told her, he is your safe space. He loves you. So you can be open and honest with him. You can tell him how you really feel because he's not going to judge you. He's not going to, you know what I'm saying? He is your husband. You should be able to tell him what you want and what you need from him. And so she got really emotional because Nicole didn't even realize how many issues she had until she started this process. And so she started that whole self-deprecating thing again. And she tried to say, you know, I didn't realize how jacked up I was. Dr. Pia had to tell her, look, we're not going to have you talking bad about yourself here. And I, I just feel like somebody needs to tell her that somebody needs to say that to her to help her. Maybe she just doesn't realize she's doing it. But somebody needs to wake her up that you can't keep doing this to yourself. You have to work to get past feeling like this because I just feel like it's only going to weigh you down in the long run, not to mention your relationship, but it's only going to weigh you down and it's going to cause you to attract people that are going to play off of that. Dr. Pia told her you're not a burden to him. You can lean on him. But I also think you need to do the individual work on yourself because that is going to get exhausting for him at some point if you're constantly having to do that and you can't self-regulate. Let's move on to Clint and Gina. 
Gina is already frustrating on a regular basis on this show, but this episode, it was even more so because it's like, why are y'all trying to get them to talk about physical intimacy? They're not even physically attracted to each other. Scratch that. Do I think that if she would open up and give this man a chance that he would be 100% invested and, you know, be able to be physically attracted to her? I really believe this, but I believe every chance she gets, she shoots him down. She tells him how much she's not attracted to him. She says how, basically saying how it's not going to work. And in order to save face, in order to not look as if he's not thirsty after her or, you know, he don't want to look like Jasmine. So he downplays how he could possibly feel. So they meet with Dr. Pia. She immediately tells her they're not connected romantically and they just don't have that draw to each other. Did y'all notice how big her mouth can get? How big her eyes can get? She is, um, she has a very animated face. But they did say that they do have those intimate desires outside of one another. And, um, the doctor was like, well, you know, do y'all take care of that? Do y'all express that to one another? Gina's like, well, I was hoping that it would happen organically. Sure. You didn't even want to move in with him. Y'all are living in two separate rooms. Have y'all ever made an effort to try to sleep in the same bed? So yeah, how, how could y'all possibly develop romantic feelings organically when you're living like roommates? The gaslighting. I cannot. Dr. Pia wasn't buying it and she was like, okay, you have to actually put in effort. Well, she ended up asking both of them what could each other do to turn each other on so he said that he likes scent he likes a vanilla scent on his woman so she could put on vanilla scent I'm sure she's gonna go find the exact opposite of that so she can repel him <laughs> and she says she likes swag but he doesn't have any and look Clint Clint he don't have any swag we know that we could tell by his haircut she talks about it later on how he needs to get a different haircut I think eventually he's going to um, and I could agree with that Clint, he could use a makeover, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like as far as his personality goes, he's very charismatic. He's very, um, charming. So no, he doesn't have swag, the stereotypical sense, but for you, I feel like he could, you're not giving him a chance to wine and dine you and romance you. You ain't giving him a chance to do it. Dr. Pia told them. They should set the mood without any expectations. Clint was like, they could do it, but he's very skeptical because he doesn't think anything's going to come of it. She was like, that's the whole point is to not put any pressure on it um, because it's easier to get distracted by those thoughts and maybe to try to caress each other, touch on each other, but not any erogenous zones. Once again, I feel like this is coming far too late. The experts gave them little exercises, gave them a basket of stuff to play with. She's just going through the motions, still including the dog and everything. I told y'all she uses that dog as a buffer. If we're talking about intimacy and us being one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get comfortable with one another, trying to touch on each other, why are you bringing up the dog? Why are you bringing up the dog? That's, stop it, stop. They went through the motions and was like massaging each other with the stuff. And she was like, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. If that's because nothing came of it. It was strictly platonic. There was nothing romantic about it. You, there was no sort of emotion in it other than, oh, I can't wait for this to be over. Irritating. Jasmine and Eris, they meet up with Dr. Pia. They tell Dr. Pia about how she, if Jasmine says one more time that I'm attracted to him and he's not attracted to me, can you let him say it one time? Because every time she says it and he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not attracted to her, but she's attracted to me. It is so, uh, it just feels degrading every time it happens. I thought they already downloaded Dr. Pia on what's going on. Why do, why do we always have to make Jasmine say it? Like, it just feels like it takes a shot of her self-esteem every time she has to say those words. I just want to run, like this whole episode, I just want to run and hug Jasmine and just slow rock and say it's going to be okay because of how I just know this is affecting her self-esteem. She already said right before this, she just developed some self-confidence. I know it went right back to where it was. And as someone who struggled with low self-confidence at some point in my life, I feel it. 
I feel it. It just, I feel it every time. It's just, it hurts me. It hurts me to see her in pain like that. I don't know if he's just has a general apathetic demeanor. You know, he just has this nonchalant thing about him. I don't know if that's just how he is in general, or he just don't care about her feelings for real, or I don't know what it is, but it just, that makes it that much worse. If she had someone like Shaq, or even like Chris, or even like Clint on this show that had like like a, a teensy bit more compassion for her in this situation. He, he talks a good game, but he's not really comforting. I don't really see him putting his arm around her. And I get it. He don't want to lead her on. But it just, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave the whole situation alone. Because it's, you're dragging this woman down. Oh, my goodness. I just, it hurts me. It hurts me, y'all. Um, Dr. Pia asked, like, how do you think that this situation can change? Um, clearly she's not getting her needs met. They don't really have much physical touch. He basically friends on her on the honeymoon. And she said, I don't want to be friends with him. I want a husband. I want to be romantically involved. And you know, he barely even hugs her. And he said it's because it's so awkward for him. How is any attraction going to grow if you don't at least try? I'm not saying take her to the bedroom and sleep with her with no emotion involved, but you can hug her. So it comes up that they don't really have any meaningful conversation. We know that she's very closed off now and, you know, just being very surface level with him. And Dr. Pia calls her out for being agreeable and not necessarily saying what's on her mind when she's feeling it. And, you know, he agrees with her and says, you know, he probes her for questions. He'll ask her like first date questions. They'll sit there on the couch or whatever. And he feels like she's not responsive. She says that, Half the time she feels like he's being sarcastic and he doesn't really want to hear the answers to these questions. And maybe he just wants to pass the time. And Dr. Pia was like, well, you should call him out if you feel that way. And, you know, basically threw it back to Eris. Like, how would you feel if she called him out? He was like, I would love it. I'd love for her to call me out. It'd be a turn on basically. And she's like completely shocked. And I feel like... He was saying like, yeah, call me out because that's going to make me more attracted to you and that's going to change the situation. And I just don't think that's the case. I think that would be false. I think that would give her false hope to say something like that because the way she was like, what? That's what you actually want? I don't think it would make a difference. And honestly, when he said that, she should have went off on him right then and there. I would have loved it if she would have checked him like so hard. And I would love to see his actual reaction because do you really want her to be honest? Because he seemed like the type that really can't take it. She ended up admitting that her dad is very nonchalant when it comes to expressing his love verbally and that he never said I love you but she always felt it so she never questioned it because he would show her I feel like that explains a lot with Jasmine as well and then she ended up confronting Eris about him clapping when she walked down the aisle at their wedding and I'm like y'all I'm so irritated by this because I actually gave him props for clapping because I had never seen anybody clap before and I thought it was a genuine reaction to you know, him being excited to see that his wife was beautiful. And you know what I'm saying? I just thought it was a genuine thing he did. Turns out Pastor Cal told him to do that. And y'all, I was so, I was so irritated by that. He literally only did it because he wanted to keep her calm because she was very anxious about doing this. And so she felt some type of way. She was like, so you clap because he told you to? So you weren't really attracted to me. So basically you're lying about that. And I don't know. I feel like that's something you shouldn't have to be prompted to do. And it's just something deceptive about it. Like I just, I, y'all, I didn't like that. And you know, cause he fooled me at first. I thought he was at least attracted to her initially. And it turns out he wasn't. <sighs> y'all, it just keeps getting worse and worse. She ends up meeting with the other ladies and you know, she tells them that, you know, she keeps brushing things under the rug because she's worried about, you know, what the outcome is going to be. And, you know, she was at her breaking point and she just completely broke down. And it was nice to see the ladies comfort her and 
Kirsten came over and gave her a hug and was like, I know you really wanted this. I know you really wanted to be a wife. And I know it's just so hurtful of how this is turning out. And I, y'all, I wanted to fight Eris so bad. <laughs> I wanted to fight Eris so bad when she was breaking down like that because, boy, let this girl go. It ain't doing nothing but hurting her in the long run. Finally, let's talk about Shaq and Kristen. We see that Shaq is packing up and he's leaving to go to Memphis for some sort of recruiting. They're on FaceTime having this very, very, very dry conversation. She said that she wished she could have been there to support him and she missed him not being there with her. And she tried to blow him a kiss and got mad that he didn't catch it even though you hung up first. Like you could have, you could have did wait honey you didn't see my kiss no you hung up then called back mad that he didn't catch it or what kirsten is odd to me she just is so weird her actions just never match i everything she does is so disingenuous to me it's like she lives in, in an alternate universe of delusion like i just i can never get a grasp on her i want y'all to put a pin in that trip we're gonna come back to it so they meet up with Dr. Pia and he's been making more of an effort to give her quality time. Dr. Pia asked how it's been. She said it was great. He said it's been rocky, but you know, they've been looking for a balance. Dr. Pia asked, do you feel comfortable letting him take care of you? And she said, yes, but it's new. Basically, Kirsten is just used to being in control of everything. So Dr. Pia asked her what attracts you to him? And she said him moving boxes was attractive to her. It was him showing his masculinity in her opinion. And you know, his he was boosted. He was feeling like a man when she said that. And I was like, okay, okay. And Dr. Pia asked a messy question. <laughs> it wasn't messy. Do you think he's masculine? And she, with a long, pause a long hesitation she said he is and dr pia was like well what's the hesitation define masculinity to you and she said a tough man a provider a business owner basically her father she keeps comparing him to her father she asked her is shaq tough and she said well he can be i just haven't seen it yet she's seen the kind pleasing side of him but she hasn't seen him in the capacity of him making her feel safe and protected at this point this is when i knew she had a toxic definition of masculinity because just like he said does he have to knock out a burglar like what does he have to do does he have to pull a hero flex for you to feel that she wants him to mimic her dad and he was like, well, do you not see me putting forth the effort? Like he's really getting frustrated. <laughs> it's getting, it's getting old with him. Cause it's always something. And I, he's never going to be your father. And I would love to, I just, I don't know. At this point, I want to see her father. I, I want bring him on the screen. I want Shaq to meet him. I want to see the dad because he, I just don't understand like why you're trying to model model this man after your dad so hard and I was talking to somebody about it and they said um most women want a man like their dad if they had their dad in their life they want a man like him and I just can't relate because I you know my dad wasn't really in my life I didn't really have that you know father figure necessarily so I can't relate in that way I just don't understand why she constantly is saying how she wants Shaq to be like her dad and Dr. Peel was basically telling Shaq you're gonna have to be yourself because you're not gonna be able to be someone that you're not just for Kristen they end up doing an exercise on intimacy and she had to let Shaq take the lead he blindfolded her and led her and she had to basically listen to his voice lead her to almost like a scavenger hunt of things for the bedroom right and she was being whiny about it oh she was getting on my nerves she ended up finding a rope and she was very intrigued by that rope especially when he put it around her she she liked that the trip came back up it turns out that Shaq wanted her to come on the trip and she made plans to come initially but then she changed her mind last minute and 
he felt some type of way about that. He didn't want to have to beg her to come because she was like, well, you should have said something if you really wanted me to come. I feel like Shaq is going out of his way to do all of this stuff for Kirsten, but what he's asking for in return, he's not getting. He just wants her to be supportive and he also wants to dig deeper with her and he wants to get to know her family and she's been so resistant on all fronts. And um, yeah, I feel like at this point, Shaq has checked out. When the producer asked him, was he happy? Basically, he was like, nah, I feel like it's done. I feel like even if at this point, Kirsten completely opened up, gave him what he wanted, introduced him to the family, you know, saw him as this masculine man and, you know, supported him fully. I feel like he still would be over it. Like I feel for the rest of these couples, except for Chris and Nicole. But y'all let me know down below. What do y'all think? Ooh, we made it through it, y'all. We made it through. We made it through. We made it through. We made it through. I almost didn't even do this. I'm glad I did because let out some of those frustrations I had about the show but y'all let me know what y'all think down below I would love to hear your opinion and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one peace